And unfortunately, they found a second tumour on my liver. So I ended up then with a, a second bout of surgery. And unfortunately, I had a lot of complications after that. Unfortunately, uh, um, infections had taken over. Yeah. And I basically spent a month in hospital. I was in ICU. I think I told you before, I, when I was in ICU, I'd been given the last rites. And uh, my mother appeared to me that night. And I think she was there to tell me that it wasn't my time just yet. And that was that. So Because you, the next morning you woke up and things were different. Yeah, the doctors, they couldn't believe it. I said, told the doctor what had happened. And he says, I deal with medicine, but he says, something is strange going on here. Mm. And I left ICU that day. They thought I was wow. going to be dead that morning. It's amazing. Like, amazing. It's, when you hear things like that, it really yeah. does give you shivers. Cause... And then I went on. I finished my chemo in the April of 22. Met Professor McCaffrey. He says, Joe, things are brilliant. You've got the all clear. Um, you know, we'll talk about maybe going back to work in six months yeah. and going back to your telly life and doing all that sort of stuff. And that was great. And then that summer, I wasn't feeling well thought it might be the prostate because I was getting up late at night and stuff like that. Unfortunately, they done more tests and they found that the cancer had come back to the exact same spot in the bowel that I had started. Never had, you know, this is very, very rare that this would happen. They ideally would have liked to have done surgery and then flush me with chemotherapy, take the tumour out. But because of all the complications that I had previously, surgery was out of the window. So we ended up then doing six very, very heavy sessions of chemotherapy with the hope that it would kill the cancer that was there. And that finished last February. I met Professor McCaffrey, and uh, he basically, Mary was with, was with me as well as my daughter, Orla. And he said, look at Joe, you know, the, the, the treatment went well. It reduced the, um, the, the, the cells that was there, but unfortunately, it didn't kill it, and we have now come to the realization that we cannot uh, cure your cancer. So the options for you is that you continue with a lifetime of chemotherapy, uh, six sessions of chemotherapy, stop, assess, scan, and then another six sessions. And I says, fair enough. And I says, if I don't do that, what is the situation? And he says, unfortunately, Joe, if you don't do that, I give you about six months, and you'll, you'll, you'll be no longer with us. So, to be fair, you know, in that situation, obviously, Mary was very upset and Ola was very upset because I don't think they expected me to bring that strong conversation up. So... Joe, to... can I ask you? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. When you say Mary was upset and your yeah. daughter... How did you feel when you got that? To be honest with you, Alan, it was... I think it was sort of reiterating what I was feeling because I knew myself that I wasn't well and I knew internally I wasn't well and... I just sort of, I, 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 I sort of knew, to be honest. And I suppose I've come to the realisation that I've been very lucky in life. I'm 58 years of age. I've had a massive, massive life. I've been on telly with you, Alan. I met Mirren. I've had a fantastic life. Life owes me nothing. We were in Crumlin Road Children's Hospital yesterday and we met a little lady, Emma Howe. And poor Emma is nine years of age with leukaemia, going through 48 sessions of chemotherapy at the minute. When you meet a little child like that, you know what I mean? They're, My, yeah, they're giving me life, Alan. You know, so yeah. the conversation wasn't go home and get your affairs in order. The conversation was, if you decide to go with chemotherapy, and it's going to be tough, and it's going to be whatever, but we're giving you life. Because there's one thing that we can say with this, and George, we'd love to talk to you in a minute because you're doing a, a yeah. wonderful thing. You're living with cancer. Yes. That's what it is. Absolutely. Live, right? as I'm sitting here, there's cancer cells live in my body. But... But you could have years and years and years and years and years. The, you could? He's, he, yeah. Um, he said to me, it could be one year, it could be seven years. He's okay. not God. It would all depend on how my body, you know, takes the chemotherapy, because it's a big ask of the body to take continual uh, chemotherapy. But that said, there is a lot of people who have had chemotherapy for 15 years or more yeah. and lived. And who's to say that in that interim time that some new piece of research may come along. And if it does, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be with Professor McCaffrey, who is the lead on all research cancers in yeah. Ireland. So the research will come to him. So, you know, I'm in a great position if that happens. Yeah. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Uh, as I say, I, I, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of death. I'm Are not, you not scared I'm of not death? I'm not scared no. of death. And you are going through the chemo. You're due chemo, is it next Tuesday. week? I'm Tuesday. Tuesday again. I'm due and chemo. And what, what session is this now? This would be this? session six of this six sessions. 
And then I will have a, a scan on Tuesday, a CT scan. And then the following week, I will meet Professor McCaffrey and he'll explain to me, you know, what we'll be doing for the next six sessions, how strong we'll be, because they have to wait to see how the last six sessions have performed yes, before exactly. they can decide how strong the next six Excellent. sessions are after, you know.